Welcome to Kevin Deal Photography, where I take you on my journey through photography. On today's episode, we're going to be doing an in-depth review of the GVM SD300B Pro. Welcome to today's episode. If you're not familiar with Kevin Deal Photography, we do gear reviews, tips, techniques, and tutorials, and sometimes we dive into film. If any of that sounds appealing to you, click the subscribe button below. So if you are a subscriber to this channel and you are a regular visitor here, you probably know that I do a lot of reviews of LED lights, especially in 2022. It seems like every single company at some point in time sent me a lights to review. So it got to the point where I was like, man, I'm, I'm good on LED light reviews. Uh, however, GVM reached out to me and wanted me to check out this 300 watt light, which I've never done anything beyond 100 watts. So I was intrigued. And so I did take them up on their offer. And I do want to be uh, upfront in the interest of transparency that they did give me this light for free in exchange for a review in addition to this modifier. But like all my reviews, my opinions are gonna be my own and it's gonna be completely transparent. If you can't trust me, then there's really no reason to come to this channel. So I will tell you what I like about this light and what I think could be improved upon. So 300 watts, that is a bright light. This is a bi-color light. It gives you a color temperature range of 2700 to 6800 Kelvin. Uh, that's important, of course, because if you are in a room, like the room I'm in right now has some fluorescent lights. Now I'm overpowering them, so the white balance here should be okay, but you may find yourself in a situation where you're having to balance your light to cooler temperatures uh, through an indirect light coming through a window, or perhaps you find yourself in a situation where you're around tungsten, or maybe you find yourself around other lights that are color temperature, uh, you know, 5600 daylight balance, and then they don't, you know, move around. They're not variable. So having a light that can match other color temperatures is important if you want everything to look balanced. Let's take a look at the back real quick. So you've got for controls, you have your mode, you've got your selector, you've got your menu, and then you've got back and you have cool. Cool is a fan. And I will just tell you right off the bat that a 300 watt LED light is incredibly hot if you're in a small room. I know that when LED lights came out, one of the selling points is that, oh, LED lights don't get hot, but that's because the lights in your house might be a couple watts at most. This is 300 and it does get hot and all LED lights at this uh, wattage do get hot. So do keep that in mind. You've got your selector on the left so you can go CCT, which is great. You have source. So for instance, if you wanna match tungsten, you can match tungsten. Now I'm gonna turn off my LED lights real quick. So as you can see, this is your tungsten. This is 5,600 Kelvin, 6,000 and so on and so forth. So you can uh, match halogen, you can match a uh, candlelight. So this would be what a candle would put out. And so there's different, there's different sources, sunset and sunrise. There's different sources that you can match, which is great. Let's go back and let's go to the effect mode. Now in the effect mode, you've got stuff like lightning. But what's cool about the lightning mode on this is you can also adjust the color temperature of the lightning. So if you want warmer lightning, I can take it down to like 2700 and it'll flash lightning at 2700. Or maybe I want to do it at 6000. So right now we're at 6400 with the lightning. And this is true with all the different presets. So as I, as I scroll around, uh, let's go, this is a CCT loop. It's doing a color temperature cycle between 2700 and 6800 Kelvin. Now it'll emulate a flickering candle. And now I'll emulate a broken light bulb. And there is an algorithm in here that will uh, change how random the flicker is. And of course, keep in mind, you can change the color temperature. Now it's doing a warm light bulb, but maybe you need to match a cooler light bulb. Uh, and so you can go in and you can change the color temperature if you really want to. And so they have other stuff like a TV. You're sitting at the TV and it's glowing and it's 
it's lighting up your face like you're looking at the television. There's also speed, so I can make uh, random, or I can have a slower flicker of the television, a faster flicker of the television. So why do you need all these effects modes? Well, maybe you're a filmmaker and you don't have a large budget. Maybe you need to have lightning flashing through a window. You have that built into this. You can just take this lamp, you can put it on the outside of a window and have the lightning flickering in, and now you have special effects on a budget. Uh, speaking of budget, this light comes in at a street price of about 400 US dollars. To get a 300 watt light at 400 US dollars is pretty rare. Uh, when you go online and you look at other manufacturers lights, they tend to be two or three times the price of this at 300 watts. Uh, so do keep that in mind. As far as color rendering index, it has a rating of greater than or equal to 97. For those of you who don't understand what that means, that means that it is incredibly accurate on color reproduction. So if you say something is at 5600 daylight balance and you light something up, it's gonna be accurate colors. It's not gonna have any shifts where it goes pink or green or anything like that. And obviously uh, when you're trying to color grade in post, having accurate colors is super important. One thing I do like about this light is that it has dimming curves and it's not really a lot of fun, in my opinion, to you know, try to control dimming curves or control dimming from the back of the light. But thankfully for all of you, they make an app and I'm gonna show you how to use the app right now. So to use the app, it opens up, it looks like any other app. Now your light has to be on, and as you can see right here, you just click on the light and you have three different areas, CCT, effects, and source matching. It's pretty straightforward. So you go over to CCT. Uh, I'm gonna turn this down a little bit so I'm not so blown out. So as you go to CCT, we can go warmer, we can go cooler. It's pretty straightforward. They have presets for daylight. Uh, they have presets for tungsten, all the different presets you want. They also have the dimming curves. So as it dims, you see here, it's like a really fast slope versus an S curve versus a gradual curve. It's pretty straightforward. Then uh, you can also turn the light on and off in the upper right corner here, which is easy. Uh, you can also save it as a preset over on the left. So you can go over there and you can name it, uh, you know, 4100 or whatever you want to name it, but I'm not going to do that. There's the source matching, as I talked about earlier, it's all right here. And then when you do match the source, so right now I'm at tungsten, you can go to 5600, you can go to candle. So you can make the candle uh, cooler if you want. Not that a candle would ever look like that, but there, let me turn that down a little bit. So you can change the color temperature of that candle. So we can make it a warmer candle or we can make it a cooler candle. And uh, so that's pretty easy. And then effects, it turns off. You gotta go to the effect, and then when you hit the effect, what's cool about this is you see there's a start button, and that's great. So I'm gonna hit the effect, and now we're gonna have lightning, and that's cool. And then maybe I wanna change that up to fireworks. Go. Now I have fireworks going. So the app is really easy to use. You can download it at all major uh, uh, stores, Google Play and the Apple Store. And so I just wanted to give you a brief overview about how you can use the app. Another cool thing about this light is that it does have DMX, which is super important if you're on a set, you're doing theatrical lighting and you're wanting to tie this into a theatrical setup. You can of course have this tie into like your ETC board or one of those boards and uh, control this light via DMX. Now GVM was nice enough to give me this awesome soft box to try out. It does not come with the light. This light comes with a hard reflector, which you can see right here, and it actually increases the light by about a stop. It should also be noted that this light attaches with a Bowens mount. Also, I did a test of this light. What does 300 watts actually get you? Because when I see 300 watts and I think about what I have to compare it to as far as strobe lights, could this be used for stills? When you use continuous lighting, if you wanna to get to 300 watts, that is super bright. And as you can see from the examples here, when this is at 300 watts, it is super bright. When you put the soft box on there, it uh, diffuses it a couple stops of light. As you can see in the examples that I'm showing you right now, both these shots were done at F9, one one hundredth of a second, but one of them was done with the GVM at full power, and the other one was done with a Pro Photo B1 at about half power. So. 
keep that in mind that you can actually do stills with this in a pinch, but also keep in mind that a continuous 300 watt light is gonna be super bright. You can see examples here. My buddy Ivan was shooting me with some B-roll and it was so bright I had to put on sunglasses. But in a pinch, you could use this for stills. Whereas in the past, most of my reviews I've had to do in the past, I had to bump my ISO upwards of 16 to 3200 to get uh, my shutter speed up high enough to where it wasn't going to create blur. So. Being able to shoot at 100th of a second at ISO 100 with a continuous light, that is somewhat unprecedented territory, especially for $400. Okay, so you've seen me go through the specifications of this light, but let's see it in use. I'm gonna use it with a model Gabriella and let's see what kind of results we can get. One of the shortcomings to shooting continuous light is you often can't shoot at low ISOs. I usually have to shoot at like ISO 1600 or higher when I'm trying to keep my shutter speed up in the studio. I'm happy to report that with the GVM light, I was able to keep my ISO down at 100 and keep my shutter speed over 100. As you can see, the color temperature was cool coming through the window, but thankfully for me, this is a bicolor light, so I turned the color temperature cooler on the light. And as you can see the before and afters, I feel like the light improved these images. All right, so you saw the results that I got with the light. Uh, I thought I did a pretty good job having the ability to change the color temperature. You saw some shots that we did in my lobby area where I had cooler temperatures coming in through the, the windows. I was able to match that with the light and it created a even white balance across the frame. There's nothing more amateurish than when you see two different white balances on a frame. And being able to have a bicolor light gives me that ability. So let's talk about the things that I like and the things that I think could be improved upon with this light. So. In terms of what I like about the light, the construction on it, it is quite rugged. Uh, I think that it's incredibly easy to articulate and adjust. It comes with the yoke mount. Another great thing about this light is that you actually have a locking power connector, which is great. So if somebody trips, maybe they're the only thing that hits the ground and not the light. Uh, I find that the menu is really easy to navigate, which is good because I hate menus. I find that the app is even easier to navigate. And so that's something to keep in mind. Uh, one thing that I really loved about the app is that when you go to some of the presets on here, there's actually a play button. A lot of LED lights that when I go to a preset, it immediately starts running that preset. The fact that I'm able to hit the play button to let it know that, okay, I want the preset to start now. That's kind of something that I've never seen in an app before. And I think that's something that GVM did that was quite thoughtful. Uh, but the, the construction on it is great. The quality on it was great. The color uh, reproduction was great. And so I, I do say that for the money, this is an incredible value. But let's talk about the things that I think could be improved upon. So one of the issues that I found with this light, and I'm not an expert on power, is that when I turn the light off, there's this weird clicking sound that's going on inside the power supply. As soon as I turn on the light, it turns off. I don't hear the sound anymore. I'm not an expert. Maybe it's just some sort of a capacitor doing its job, but I personally don't have power supplies that make noise when my unit is off. Um, the only other thing that I wish could be improved upon, which of course would increase the cost, is that this is not IP rated. And so if you wanna go take this out in the elements, uh, it's not going to do that for you. Uh, if it gets rained on, it's gonna you know, probably electrocute you. So don't, don't take this out into the elements. Uh, it is not IP rated, but I do have confidence in the build quality from here on out. I'm just a little concerned about that power supply. Uh, I think it's kind of cool, the aesthetic that this lights up. I mean, is that really something that you need? No, but it's kind of cool looking. I also find that the lugs are really easy. The teeth lock in very easily. I find that uh, oftentimes the uh, cheaper lights, uh, when you're tightening these lugs, they don't quite stick right. I don't seem to have a problem with that. And I also find that the softbox, even though I'm uh, doing a review mainly on the light, I found that the softbox is a pleasure to use. Sometimes when you're opening and closing a softbox, it can be kind of a pain. Uh, this was not a pain. It was super easy to work with. It's a deep parabolic uh, shape, but uh, yeah. I would say buy with confidence. Uh, maybe I just got a faulty power supply. Uh, maybe you'll be luckier than me, but that's really the only thing I can fault on this light. 
Uh, but that does it for today's episode. If you found this review to be useful, if you found it to be helpful, tell me about it in the comments below. Do you have the GVM SD300B? Are you liking it? Tell me about that in the comments below. And if you're a fan of this channel, I humbly ask you to click the subscribe button below. And also, if you like the discussions I have on this channel and you want to take these discussions further, I highly recommend you check out my F11 photography podcast that's on all major platforms, including Apple and Spotify. Until next time, I'll talk to you later. Bye.